So we were able to submit our form. And ideally, now we have a way to capture that data that the user sends to the server. Once again, if I submit some sort of data and click Send, I get Form Submitted. Hooray. Now, if I open up the Developer Tools and refresh that, you'll see that we have a few errors that we have to take care of. One is this Form Submitted. So if I scroll all the way down, there's actually one thing I need to fix in order for my server to be able to read this data. We have to go into our contact.html and we just have to make sure that all our inputs, that is email, text, and the text area, have a name attribute. And this is so we can actually grab the data on the back end. I'll show you what I mean. So let's have name here as email name here as the subject, and then name here as the message. So that if I save this now, and I go back to my contacts, and submit this again, well, we'll have to refresh it first. So let's refresh send some messages. And if I click Submit now, and we go to Submit Form, you'll see that if I scroll all the way down, I have a Form Data field. We now have email, subject, and message that we actually send all the way back to our Flask application because we now gave it these name attributes, it knows what to send. So this is just a quick gotcha. It's just an HTML form standard that we'll just have to add ourselves. Now, if we go to the Flask documentation, we can access these values using the request.form. So if we go back and we go to server.py, we can do something like they say in the documentation. I can say if request, and this request is something that we'll have to import, which I already have done from Flask. So if request.method, which is if we said that the method is going to be post, which if we looked at contact.html, we have the method as post. So if that's the case, then I want you to grab that data by doing request.form. And I can access different values like email or message like this. Now, an easy way for us to grab this information is actually to do a method called to dict, which is turning something, the form data, into a dictionary. So we're going to get everything as a dictionary. And then finally, to make sure that we get this data, let's just print data. And we just have to return something. So let's say return. And I want you to return form submitted for now. Otherwise, we'll just return something went wrong. Try again. If we save this, let's open up our terminal and let's go back to the form. Let's refresh. I'm going to close this for now and just submit our regular information. If I click send, form is submitted. I have some errors here that we're going to have to fix soon. But if I scroll a little bit up, look at that. We have email, subject, and message as a dictionary on our back end. We just transferred data to our Python app. How cool is that? Now, the reason we get this error at the bottom is because right now, when I submit a form, I'm still requesting the favicon icon. 
Now, if we go back to our application, you'll notice that anytime we visit a new area, our favicon is not showing. Well, if we go back to our page, let's go to index.html, we'll see that in the link over here, we're looking for our favicon.icon in static assets. But if you remember, we have our bolt.icon right in the static folder here. So all we have to do is just either rename some of those files, or in our case, we can just move this, call it favicon.icon, and move it into the static assets folder, like so. Now if I refresh the page, you'll see that I have my new Bolt favicon. Finally, I want to actually do something more interesting. Once a user submits a form, I want to have a little thank you message. Now there's many ways of doing this, but the easiest way we're going to do is we're going to copy this entire file. So I'm just going to say duplicate and call it thank you.html. Now thank you.html will be the exact same thing as the contact page that we created, except instead of the form that we have, so let's grab this form information. So instead of having this form, perhaps it will simply say, thank you. I will get in touch with you shortly. Just like that. Now the cool thing that we can do here is that we can now redirect to the thank you page after they submit the contact form. And the way we can do that is in the server.py, we can import, let's make this a little bit smaller, and we'll import the redirect module. And all we have to do here, instead of saying form submitted, is we can say redirect to what route? Well, we'll redirect to thank you.html, like this. Again, because thank you.html is in our templates, and because our routes are set up to change dynamically, we should be able to redirect to thank you.html. If I save and let's say refresh, submit some data in here, click send, look at that. Thank you. I will get in touch with you shortly. How cool is that? And there's many cool things that we can do here, right? Using the curly brackets like this, if let's say we ask somebody to submit their username or name, we can say thank you with perhaps their actual name that they submitted. So something like thank you, Bob, or thank you, Ann. But that's something we've already talked about. For now, that looks pretty nice. So I'm able to now submit a contact form. Make sure that we don't get any errors. So if I click on send, look at that. HTML even tells me, hey, this has to be an email. Okay, let's send. And there we go. Everything is working. There are no errors. We're submitting the form with all our data and we're receiving all that information right over here. How cool is that? So we now have our server.py set up to actually accept information. And now we have our website that's able to, well, hopefully allow us to have clients message you. But we need to do something with this data to store it somewhere. Because now, this is in memory. Anytime I close the server, this information is lost. Ideally, we persist it somewhere. Or ideally, we store it somewhere so that in the future, we can go back maybe a week later and see who has submitted a form on our website. 
Well, let's do that in the next video.